Hey everyone, you know in order to get through the frozen cold waters of the Arctic, ships have to be specially designed to break through the ice. So for today's video, we're going to look through the 15 most powerful icebreaker ships in the world. Number 15. The CCGS Louis S. Saint Laurent while Canada has its fair share of icebreakers, the CCGS Louis S. St. Laurent is the flagship of the Canadian fleet. It's classified as a heavy icebreaker, and it entered service in 1969 and has primarily served as both a cargo ship for various remote communities and a research vessel. Although in particularly ice-heavy years, it's even served as a navigational ship for cargo barges trying to reach the port of Montreal. Regarding its power, it uses five Krupp diesel engines that can generate a combined total of about 29,000 kilowatts of power, allowing the ship to have a range of 4,300 kilometers at a max speed of 16 knots. However, while its stats are solid, due to its old age, it's often in need of repairs, although the Canadian government is also committed to continuing these repairs well into the 2020s. Number 14. The Sabir and Ural Russia has been on a mission to make the most of their northern Arctic waters, and one of the ships that's part of those plans is the Sabir and Ural. Considered by most to be on the newer side, they were first launched between 2017 and 2019, and only began service between 2021 and 2022. Part of a project by Russia, they're part of an effort to make a series of the world's most powerful nuclear-powered icebreakers, and by all accounts, these two sister ships are near untouchable coming equipped with three 20,000 kilowatt nuclear-powered generators and a total propulsion of 80,000 horsepower. These two ships are designed to be capable of breaking 2.8 meters of thick level ice at continuous speeds of between 1.5 and 2 knots when operating at full power. This puts these ships in a class above their competition, and in terms of strength, they're only really matched by the Arctica, which is the lead ship of the class. As a result, they're easily some of the most powerful icebreakers on the planet. Number 13. USCGC Healy While the United States often likes to build its own equipment in rather secretive facilities, the USCGC Healy was an exception to this tradition. It was built in a bilateral agreement by American shipbuilding company Avondale Industries and Finnish engineering firm Kaverner Masayard's Arctic Technology Center. The ship stands out for not just being the most technologically advanced American icebreaker, but also for being the U.S. Coast Guard's largest vessel. Although it was primarily built to serve as a research ship, it's also got a number of other duties too, as it's been used for search and rescue operations, ship escorts, environmental protection, and law enforcement throughout its time in service. In order to do its job effectively, the USCGC Healy makes use of a diesel-electric powertrain that produces 3,400 kilowatts of power, allowing it to reach a maximum speed of about 17 knots and continuously travel through ice that's up to 1.4 meters thick. These impressive stats, they're supported by add-ons such as two dolphin helicopters and has five scientific labs. And as a result, the Healy is easily one of the Coast Guard's coolest vessels. Number 12. The Odin While the Norse god Odin may be pretty powerful, this Swedish icebreaker ship Odin may be even greater. Constructed in 1988, she was originally built to use her 18,000 kilowatt engines and large front icebreaker to clear paths for ships in the Gulf of Bothnia. Yet she was later converted into a state-of-the-art research vessel. Requiring a team of 15 people to operate and coming with a helicopter on board, this vessel is easily able to get through icy waters in order to conduct experiments, as the Odin has the ability to travel at speeds of up to 3 knots through 1.9 meter thick ice. In 1991, she used her abilities to set the record for being the first non-nuclear icebreaker to reach the North Pole, and in later years she has conducted various missions to the North and South Poles. Best of all, given the fact that she's still up and running over 30 years later, and it's an active part of Sweden's research efforts, I think it's fair to say that the Odin may be just as immortal as her namesake. Number 11. The RV Polar Stern of all the ships on this list, one of the coolest by far is the RV Polar Stern. Translated to the Pole Star in English, this German research icebreaker is owned by the Alfred Wegener Institute for Polar and Marine Research, and as a result is primarily used for scientific expeditions. First built all the way back in 1982, it had an illustrious career as it attained a world record in 2008 for being the first research ship to circumnavigate the North Pole, and was part of a highly publicized mission in 2019 when the crew got stuck in the Arctic after their support plane crew got sick with COVID-19, leaving them stranded and without resources at what ended up being the highest latitude ever reached by a ship in Arctic winter. 
However, while sailing, this hiccup was rather inconvenient. The RV Polar Stern has more or less experienced smooth sailing since, and this is largely thanks to its impressive stats. Featuring four diesel engines with a combined horsepower of 19,000, the ship can travel at a maximum speed of 15.5 knots and can continuously break 1.5 meter ice while going at a speed of 5 knots. As a result, the RV Polar Stern is the perfect ship for its role in facilitating multi-month Arctic voyages. Number 10. The 50 Let Pobity While the 50 Let Pobity may be quite old, it still maintains a place as one of the stars of the Russian icebreaker fleet. Construction of this massive ship first began on October 4th of 1989 at the Baltic Shipyard in modern-day St. Petersburg, Russia. However, due to the lack of funding, construction halted in 1994, was restarted in 2003, and finally finished in 2007. Powered by two 170-megawatt nuclear reactors and two 27,000-kilowatt steam turbo generators, the ship stands apart due to its unique use of a spoon-shaped bow ability to reach speeds of up to 21.4 knots and the ease in which it breaks through ice that's up to 2.5 meters thick. Yet, the 50 Lit Pobody is perhaps most famous for being a top-of-the-line passenger ship, carrying up to 128 guests in 64 two-person cabins. Got a number of luxurious features on board too, such as an exercise facility, swimming pool, library, a restaurant, a massage parlor, and a music salon. Additionally, it was also used as part of the Sochi 2014 Olympic Games, as it was the ship that sent the Olympic flame to the North Pole as part of the festivities. Therefore, I think you'd agree, the 50 Lead Pobody, that's a pretty cool vessel. Number 9. The Kigoriak While most vessels spend their lives in the service of one country, the Kigoriak managed to serve in three. But you see, in the mid-1970s, a company known as Canadian Marine Drilling began to search for oil in the Beaufort Sea and they built the Kenmar Kigoriak in order to support those operations. Its primary mission was to protect stationary drill ships from drifting ice through ice management, and while the vehicle was quite capable due to the 17,000 horsepower provided by its two engines, the operation it was part of ended up being a flop. By 1997, Kenmar had more or less given up on finding commercial quantities of oil in the area, and as a result, they sold the Kigoriak to an international conglomerate of shipping companies, who for tax purposes changed the nationality from Canadian to Liberian. Renamed the Kigoria, her large cargo deck and powerful cranes set her apart from many other ships in the conglomerate's fleets, and as a result, this conglomerate used her in marine salvage operations for several years. However, in 2003, the decision was made to sell her to a joint venture between the Russian Femco Group and the Netherlands-based Smith Terminals. Reflagged as a Russian vessel, the Kogoriak went back to its roots, supporting the creation of oil platforms and oil drilling in the Arctic. However, due to the creation of much more powerful icebreakers, by the late 2010s, the Kogoriak began to become redundant. She was ultimately sold for scrap in January of 2022. Number 8. Zhongshan Dashui GD of all the ships on this list, the one with the strangest chain of ownership is the Zhongshan Dashui GD. Built by Nippon Kokan KK in Japan's Surimi Shipyard between 1982 and 1983, it was immediately transferred to the Canadian part of the Beaufort Sea, where it was used by Gulf Canada Resources in order to support oil drilling operations in the area. However, when it became clear that the oil reserves in the Beaufort Sea weren't all they were cracked up to be, the firm made the decision to sell the ship, and it ended up transferring it in 1998 to the Russian company Schmidt International. Here, it acted as a standby ship in the Sea of Otosk, and after changing hands with another Russian company, the decision was made in 2018 to transfer it to the Chinese company Cozy Marine, who promptly sent it to Antarctica as part of the Chinese reality show On the Road. Then, in 2021, it was sold to Sun Yat-sen University in China, who at this point in time is its current and potentially final owner. Now, as you might expect, a ship as popular as this one has some pretty impressive stats. It's fitted with four engines that provide a combined total of about 15,000 horsepower. It's a very capable vehicle and can continuously travel through 1.4 meter thick ice with ease. Therefore, as China continues to get more interested in Arctic and Antarctic exploration, I wouldn't be surprised if this aging yet capable ship sees more and more use. Number 7. The CCGS Terry Fox Of all the ships on this list, the one with perhaps the most storied career is the CCGS Terry Fox. 
First launched in 1983, the ship was part of Gulf Canada Resources' offshore drilling system in the Beaufort Sea, where it remained on standby 24-7 in order to manage the ice around the rig. However, while the area was promising, it turned out that most of the oil deposits were small and scattered, and as a result it was determined that it would not be worth the cost to drill the oil out. This led to the entire project being abandoned, and to the CCGS Terry Fox being purchased by the Canadian Coast Guard. Given its four 5,800 horsepower engines and its status as a Casper Arctic Class 4 ship, it was large and strong enough to enter service as a heavy icebreaker. While its home port is on the coastal city of St. John's and Newfoundland and Labrador, the CCGS Terry Fox now spends its days traveling up and down the St. Lawrence River, clearing up shipping routes so that cargo vessels can travel to larger cities such as Quebec City and Montreal. However, I should note that the CCGS Terry Fox recently got itself in a little bit of hot water. That's because in August of 2022, it was at a dock in the Arctic town of Prince Regent Inlet in Nunavut, when the ship's port side service generator caught on fire, leading to some pretty extensive damage. However, the ship was promptly put under repair, and it was back up and running by the end of September. Number 6. The Yamal Rush is home to a massive fleet of nuclear icebreakers, and one of its most powerful in the old guard of the fleet is the Yamal. That's because while Rush's Project 22220 has churned out a lot of new super powerful icebreakers, the Yamal is part of the original Arctica class and a true beast on the seas. First entering service in 1992, her main role is to both keep Arctic shipping lanes open and carry passengers on Arctic expeditions, all of which she manages to do thanks to her double hull that's an astounding 48 millimeters thick and her two 27,000 kilowatt turbo generators plus 171,000 kilowatt nuclear reactors. These are useful because they allow the ship to reach a maximum of 20 knots in clear conditions and easily break through 2.3 meter thick ice in cooler conditions. Now, beyond her impressive specs, the Yamal is also cool thanks to her top-of-the-line interior. She's able to fit 100 passengers in 50 two-person cabins. The ship's amenities include a large dining room, library, passenger lounge, auditorium, volleyball court, gymnasium, heated indoor swimming pool, sauna, and infirmary. However, outside of cruise ship expeditions, it's also seen use as a transport vehicle for Russian research stations, having taken part in two operations known as North Pole 36 and North Pole 37. The ship carried drifting ice stations filled with explorers, dogs, and hundreds of pounds of cargo to their Arctic locations, and eventually transported them back once their research missions were over. Beyond these two missions, the ship has actually gone to the North Pole a total of 45 additional times, making it nothing if not active. Number 5. The RRS Sir David Attenborough while many icebreakers are used to help cargo ships sail, one of the most advanced research icebreakers is the RRS David Attenborough. First launched about a year ago on November 17th of 2021, it came in at an astounding $240 million, representing the British government's largest investment in Arctic and Antarctic research since the 1980s. However, despite the high spend, by most accounts it seems to have been absolutely worth it. Replacing two aging vessels known as the RRS James Clark Ross and the RRS Ernest Shackleton, the RRS Sir David Attenborough is a sizable ship, coming in at 130 meters in length, 24 meters in width, and equipped with two 3600 kilowatt and two 5400 kilowatt engines. It uses this heft in its duties with the British Antarctic Survey, as it's not only strong enough to cut through thick Arctic waters, but it's also fit with state-of-the-art scientific facilities, instruments, and laboratories that enable scientists to conduct studies about the ocean, seafloor, ice, and atmosphere. In order to make those studies easier, it has a moon pool, which is a vertical 4x4 meter shaft that's open to both the air and sea that allows scientific equipment to be deployed and recovered through the center, which is significant because this is far safer and easier than deploying equipment over the side of the boat in rough seas of the polar oceans. To top this off, the ship can operate at sea for up to 60 days at a time, allowing it to undertake long-haul missions with ease. As such, the RRS Sir David Attenborough truly is an incredible asset to the British government and the scientific community at large. Number 4. The Arctica While the Sabir and Ural may be her sister ships, the Arctica is the true leader in its class. First entered into service in October of 2020, the Arctica came in at a staggeringly high price of $1.16 billion. 
Yet many would contend that this incredible ship was worth the price. Coming in at a length of about 175 meters and width of 34 meters, it is a physically imposing vessel, yet what really sets it apart are its two 36,000 kilowatt turbo generators and two 175,000 kilowatt nuclear reactors, all of which help the Arctica produce over 80,000 horsepower. It uses all this horsepower to support cargo vessels going through icy waters, and this helps it to maintain Russia's economic lines. However, the reality is, is that despite its grandeur and potential to be great, as of now, it has continually run into problems. In the construction phase, the ship faced delays, with this mostly being due to issues surrounding its illegal occupation of Crimea. More specifically, the ship was first set to be built using Ukrainian parts. Yet due to the diplomatic issues Russia caused surrounding Crimea, Ukraine pulled out of the deal, forcing the Russian government to scramble to find Russian firms that could fill in the gaps. Then, in February of 2020, it was reported that the propulsion motor on the starboard shaft had failed due to a short circuit, and as a result, a 270-ton motor had to be replaced with little notice. Even after its completion, the Arctica still faced problems, as for much of her career, technical issues have forced the ship to remain in harbor. So, while well, the Arctica is certainly pretty cool, it needs to have a fair shake of kinks ironed out before it becomes a fully functioning vessel. Number 3. The S.A. Agulhas II Given its proximity to the South Pole, South Africa is a major player when it comes to South Pole exploration, and the S.A. Agulhas II plays a major role in the country's South Pole efforts. Ordered in November of 2009 in order to replace the original S.A., she was completed in April of 2012 and serves as both a research vessel and a supply ship for existing South African research centers in Antarctica. Created by STX Finland for a price of about $170 million, the ship is in the possession of the South African Department of Environmental Affairs and to this day conducts research in joint missions between Finnish and South African students. In order to take part in this trade, the ship breaks ice that's as much as one meter thick at a speed of five knots, with this being possible thanks to the ship's four six-cylinder 4,000-horsepower Vortzila diesel-generating engines and a diesel-electric powertrain with two 4,500-kilowatt cover team propulsion motors. As a result of all this power, it's got a range of 28,000 kilometers and can reach speeds as high as 16 knots, making it pretty much one of a kind. Yet what really makes this ship impressive is its onboard facilities. It's able to accommodate up to 100 passengers. It features facilities such as gym, library, business centers, and an auditorium. While its eight permanent and six containerized laboratories allow it to conduct some serious research surrounding marine, environmental, biological, and climate-related topics. Interestingly enough, perhaps this ship's coolest mission to date came rather recently. As in February and March of 2022, the ship served as the lead ship for the Endurance 22 expedition, which after more than a hundred years found Sir Ernest Shackleton's sunken ship, the Endurance, 3,400 meters beneath the surface of the water. So I think this one's fair to say that the ship has done a lot for the fields of science and history. Number 2. The USCGC Mackinac while most of these ships got a spot due to their raw, ice-breaking power, the USCGC Mackinac stands apart due to an entirely different metric. That's because this Coast Guard ship is one of the few icebreakers out there to be fully weaponized. Made to replace the first USCGC Mackinac that was decommissioned in 2006 after 62 years of service, the ship services the American portions of the Great Lakes and has a number of duties which include icebreaking for ships trying to travel across the lakes, helping ships navigate the Great Lakes waters, acting as law enforcement, conducting search and rescue missions, and even deploying an oil skimming system to respond to oil spill situations. As a result of its multiple uses, the ship is armed with two medium-sized machine guns and various small arms, allowing it to be ready for any situation. In other words, it's the Swiss Army knife of the icebreaking world. Now, while its utility does come at a cost in terms of its size, after all it weighs 3,500 tons, which is relatively small for an icebreaker, Mackinac more than makes up for it with her two 6,800 kilowatt electric azimuth thrusters and 410 kilowatt bow thruster, all of which help the ship break through the ice that's up to a meter thick and, when necessary, turn 360 degrees around its axis in order to redirect its propulsion efforts. Yet, despite its great onboard equipment, the Mackinac has had its fair share of problems. The most notable of them all came on December 12th of 2005, when it accidentally struck a seawall in Grand Haven, Michigan. Causing a three-meter dent in the bow of its starboard side, this led to its captain getting permanently removed from duty, and unsurprisingly, the ship had to undergo repairs afterwards. 
However, this ended up only being a minor setback, since the ship is still up and running today. Number 1. Kapitan Dranitsyn Built all the way back in 1975, under the Soviet Union, the Kapitan Dranitsyn spent the first 20 years of her life as a path-clearing vessel, chugging her way through the thick ice of the North Sea with her three 5400 kilowatt engines and trio of four bladed fixed-pitch propellers. However, in 1995, the decision was made to make a complete 180 and turn her into a joint cruise and research ship. She's fitted with 49 cabins for passengers and 51 for crew members and researchers. She's owned by a Russian organization known as the Arctic and Antarctic Research Institute, primarily offering excursions in the Arctic Ocean north of Russia. The boat is almost like a mini floating city, as it's equipped with lounges, bars, a heated swimming pool, a gym, sauna, library, and a small hospital. And while these mixed research and pleasure voyages are generally low risk, in 2020 the Kapitan Dranitsyn completed what was probably its most impressive voyage to date. You see, it was during this time period that a ship known as the Polar Stern drifted to a position of 88 degrees north, putting it just 156 kilometers away from the North Pole, and making it the first ship to go so far north during the Arctic winter. However, as a result of this record, the ship became ice-locked, and in order to save it, the Kapitän Dranitsyn reached it by breaking through copious amounts of ice, some of which had at some places become up to 30 meters high. This marked the first time a ship had made it so far north under her own power, and so early in the year, making it a pretty impressive feat. However, since the Kapitän Dranitsyn had to expend so much fuel in order to make the journey, its engines were too depleted to make the journey home. And as a result, yet another ship known as the Admiral Makarov had to journey through the ice path made by the Kapitän Dranitsyn in order to refuel her. I'll see you next time. Watch our Waves playlist for more top 15 videos about massive waves. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best wave videos.